what we see in the first three commandments is how we are to live in reference to and in light of the only true and living God. The first commandment tells us that we are to have no other gods but God. He is to be exclusive object of our worship, the ultimate object of our love and desire. The second commandment is similar and tells us that we are not to worship God according to our own conception of God, what the Bible calls idolatry. The first, do not have any other gods. The second, worship God according to who He is and not according to who we want Him to be. In other words, do not worship false gods and do not worship God falsely. The third commandment is actually quite similar. We are not to misuse or mistreat the name of God. We know that God's name describes His character, the essence of His being, which is why He told Moses that His name is I Am. In other words, God is saying, My name is that I am self-existent and eternal. Do not misuse the name of God. Doesn't merely mean that there are certain words we can and cannot say. It means that when we speak of God, whether through words or lifestyle, we are to fully honor and respect who He is. Let me talk a bit about the first two commandments. Say for instance, you believe in your heart that some goal in your life some prestige or kind of job or a relationship with the person of your dreams will provide you with ultimate comfort and will answer your heart's desire for significance and that in a daily functional way you look to that goal to provide you with deeper comfort than God. That's breaking the first commandment. You have turned your goal into your God. Prestige, a certain job, a person that has become the object of your worship. The flip side is that you worship God because you believe that He should provide you with comfort by providing this prestige, this job, this relationship that you desire and are looking for that. That's also a violation of the commandments. You have imposed your conception of God of, of who He should be. You have created a custom designer God, an idol. These first two commandments are that we worship God alone and that we worship God as a true God and not worship a designer God or an idol. So why do these commandments insist on us worshipping God alone and worshipping God as He is and not as how we want Him to be? Why is the third commandment so insistent on honouring and respecting His name and His character? It is because God created us with a desire for Him that only He can fulfill, that only He can answer. If we are, or we, if we are always trying to change who God is or replace Him with something else, we'll never be at peace. We'll never experience true comfort, true significance, true joy. It will never be whole. But if God is at the center of our lives, not another God or a revised version of God, but the true and living God, we will be truly at true peace. This is precisely why Augustine wrote that you have made this for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you.